Cumbria is known for its lakes, rivers, woodlands and seaside towns, and the borough of Copeland ticks all of those boxes. This often quiet and forgotten part of the country was at the epicentre of political talk in February of this year, as Labour lost one of its longest held seats to the Conservatives. The coastline constituency runs from the maritime town of Whitehaven southwards to the old ironworks town of Millham, stretching westwards to England's highest point, Scarfell Pike. The area is a popular tourist destination for those who enjoy camping, walking and other outdoor activities, with towns, villages and pubs, great stops along the way. But for the people living in the area, the natural setting is everyday life, with man-made structures like the nuclear recycling plant Sellafield having a much bigger role in their day-to-day -day lives. This documentary will be looking at the issues that were key to the people living here, and to try and uncover why after 75 years, Labour lost the seat of Copeland. Well, I was born in Whitehaven, and apart from the military service, I've lived and worked in Copeland all my life. I'm now retired. Generally, the Lake District is a place that I've loved all my life and I wouldn't like to live anywhere else. The area of Whitehaven was, um, it had lots, lots of industries when I was younger. It had the mining industries, it had the uh, textile industries, it had the marchand, who had three, three quite large ships used to come into the harbour with phosphates. Um, but over the years, these have um, closed down, people have, have moved away or moved into other jobs. And all those big industries carried lots of people who would predominantly be in some kind of a union um, of different, you know, different kinds of unions. So, uh, being a Labour part, being a Labour uh, um, constituent, that's probably the reason why with all those people. But I think as the years have gone on and these industries have closed down, people have either moved out or got jobs working for smaller companies, and um, there's a lot more emphasis on um, tourism, um, and I think. Uh, the Labour Party uh, just kind of gradually got less and less and less important to the people of the area. Mike is a very well respected member of his community. It's clear that he cares about the area and when he met Labour's candidate for MP, Gillian Troughton, he wanted to ask her about her plans for the constituency. But the conversation took a very different turn. I met Gillian Troughton, she came under the doorstep. First of all, the, the, there was two Labour representatives came to talk to me and we were having a conversation. And then Julian Troughton came and she stood and we engaged me in a conversation. And I was expecting a good debate, but when she didn't like what I was saying to her, and she didn't like, hate, like what, what she was hearing, she turned her back and she just walked away and left her two colleagues standing. Do you mind if I ask what it was you were having a debate about? Yeah, uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Um, I told her I would never vote for Labour as long as he was a Labour leader. Despite the Labour leader being apparently unpopular in Copeland, Brian Goulding, who is chair of the parish council in Seascale, says that he likes Jeremy Corbyn, but that some of his policies may be off-putting to people living in the area. I feel that there is a number of people that are not happy with their leader, uh, Corbyn. Um, and some of his policies and his thoughts. Having said that, I thought he was one of the, he is one of the most honest politicians that um, has been. He's always stuck by what, he's, what he believes in. Whether or not we believe in the same thing is a different matter. His dislike of the nuclear power, um, when you've got the West Coast virtually dedicated to nuclear power and uh, the nuclear industry, and they employ well over 12,000 people, it's hard to say that they're going to vote for somebody who is not going to back them or support that industry. As chairman of his local parish council, Brian is extremely busy staying in contact with people in the area, listening to their problems as well as keeping in touch with the other parishes and town councils for bigger projects across the whole region. He told me about the biggest issues facing the borough today. At this present moment, we are talking of increasing uh, or building a new nuclear power station uh, with the possibility of another 4,000 people coming here. But at the same time, they're talking of reducing the, the local hospital. Seems crazy to me. 
we have no bus service in this village um, which then forces everybody to use cars we then have problems of parking we have problems of roads so um, a lot of policies are not thought through I'm a senior staff nurse in A&E, which obviously means like, I care for all people that come through the emergency department from triage right through to resuscitation. Um, I have a senior role, which means that our mentor junior staff, um, obviously for the clinical experience, I've been there for quite a while and undertaken quite a few courses. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much my role. Having worked at the hospital for so long, Jenny knows better than anyone what it will take to get it back on track and she told me that despite improvements, more money is desperately needed. I think funding is a massive, a massive issue. Um, and as well, like, obviously, that has a knock-on effect with staff morale. Obviously, the, the biggest thing that people are aware of is that we've got the new hospital, um, which is a good thing. Our department um, in the old hospital was very outdated and very small so obviously the new hospital's bigger um, more up to date we've got a lot more space and it, it's fit for purpose now which is good and I think has boosted morale massively um, but other changes obviously are like a lot of our services have been taken away um, emergency surgery's gone orthopedics have gone um, obviously there's a question around paediatrics at the minute um, which in turn has a massive knock-on effect in A&E. So a lot of the staff in A&E feel like we're a front door, but there's no house behind it, uh, is how I'd explain it. So you have people that are coming in the middle of the night that have got um, like a GI bleed, so uh, like an internal bleed, and there's nothing that you can do for them at Whitehaven, so they have to go to the, down the road to Carlisle in an emergency ambulance. And it, it only takes one accident, like on the A595, doesn't it, to close the road, and then how do you get there? Like... So the floods were a prime example. Um, from a personal point of view, my brother-in-law um, was really, really unwell um, when, the, when it was the floods. He had a, he's 30, 39 at the time, he had a cardiac arrest. So ultimately he died. Travelling for up to two hours for basic NHS services in a country like the UK is a travesty. Heather Dempsey, a 19-year-old from Whitehaven, showed the frustration shared not just by Copeland, but the whole county when she appeared on BBC Question Time. I think uh, the erosion of the NHS in the UK, and particularly in the north of England, has already long ago begun. Um, I mean, for instance, uh, in Whitehaven, which is 40 miles from here, uh, anyone in emergency situation or a mother in, in a desperate situation having a baby in an ambulance faces a 40-mile yeah. journey of an hour to Carlisle to have that baby in a consultant-led maternity department. Now, that is not care-free at the point of an Need for people in Cumbria. We need to protect our NHS and I'm sorry but that's not going to come from privatisation. It's going to come from investment. I wanted to get that question in if I could. I didn't, I put a question in about the hospital um, but in the end I ended up um, kind of raising my hand and making a point on it because there was an NH, NHS question chosen but it wasn't my question so I chipped in. Um, but. Basically, I just thought it's a local show. You know, the reason that they tour it around the country is so that they can get uh, local perspectives and uh, hopefully bring these kind of local issues that are really, really important to us um, to the national attention. Um, and I thought if I could take my chance to, to do that with the hospital campaign, then I would. Um, so when an NHS question came up, I, I decided to, to try and say my bit, really. Um, in terms of the responses, I th I was quite disappointed really with how it was responded to. I think part of that to do part of that was to do with the fact that it was so near the end of the program, and everything is done in the hour, so you know it wasn't cut or anything like that. So there was time constraints, but um, yeah, I thought you know predictably um, the the Scottish Conservative leader and, and Paul Nuttall of UKIP were quite um, evasive uh, because. Neither of them have very much faith in the NHS, so I wasn't surprised that they didn't answer my question very well. Um, yeah, I thought it was kind of glossed over, um, and I, I expect better, really, um, for, for our local issues. Another issue local to Copeland is the preservation of the natural surroundings. 
Nearly everybody that I've spoken to as part of this documentary has told me that the nature and the mountains and the wildlife is what makes them love this part of the country. Its positive effects are not just aesthetic. The tourism that it brings in is as much a boost to local businesses as Sellafield. Peter Trimming is a wildlife conservationist and he's been visiting Copeland regularly for the past five years. Well, I think, um, as always, uh, you look at politics and, yeah, issues are many and varied, and a lot of them are based around human needs, and, and I can understand that, but at the end of the day, we're only one species of many in Britain, um, unfortunately one of the most numerous species, and I think wildlife gets very much squeezed, and people say, yeah, we're, you know, we do this, we do that for wildlife. Um, what it equates to in actual conservation terms probably doesn't amount to a lot. Possibly it goes back even to education. And I know, and again, this is a, a political issue, the, the needs of education in the 21st century are very different from when I was a youngster. In my own case, it was probably my father pointing out a red squirrel when I was about 10 years old. In, uh, in Wisley in Surrey. Now, I didn't see the squirrel, I saw the movement in the branches, but I can't claim to have seen it. But that was when I was 10, and then, you know, you, you fast forward 40 plus years, it was when the, uh, when the, really the, the seed started to germinate. I headed to a local golf club in the village of Seaskill to speak to people there and find out their feelings on the main issues and what the Labour Party could do to turn things around. Living around here, um, once austerity kicked in, you can't even go to the toilet in Whitehaven anymore, which is like the sort of administrative centre of Copeland. However, the government was spending millions or throwing millions into a project that wasn't a, a government run project, the um, Garden Bridge in London. We can't go for a piss but they want, and they've had tens of millions, I think it was about 59, 60 million, something like that, spent on a bridge that's got trees on it. Look at our roads, look at our the infrastructure, crap, yeah. look at <clears throat> bin collections, look at policing, look at anything else. I think a lot of the facts that uh, there's been a big swing to the Conservatives in Copeland is down to the fact that Jeremy Corbyn is now leading the Labour Party because he's, he's perceived, quite honestly, as a joke. Would you agree with that presumption? Yes. During the filming of this documentary, I spoke to all sorts of people from all walks of life. They all had their beliefs about what was best for the area, whether it was a political party or candidate, or an issue that they felt was being overlooked. Despite their disagreement on issues, politics and what the future may hold, they all had one thing in common. They love Copeland and Cumbria. It's their home. And for those who don't live there, they treat it as if it was. Their passionate arguments all come from wanting to do what is best for the region, to see it flourish. It's clear to see that there are those that still support Labour. But the party is fractured into almost as many different pieces as there were issues to consider when voting. Labour have lost and it seems that unless they implement a coherent plan, their downward trajectory will continue. Only time will tell what Labour do to win Copeland back. <laughs>